The Beatles undoubtedly hold the most important legacy in the history of music. Love them or loathe them, pretty much all pop music we know today can trace their roots back to this one indelible foursome. No other band on the planet has stood the test of time and remains so revered 60 years on, quite like the Beatles. Despite the monumental success of these four friends from Liverpool, it's well recorded that tensions were often high within the band. For the majority of its existence, the Beatles were mere moments away from boiling over into catastrophe. There were constant fallouts, bickering and disagreements between the four. It's hard to believe that with a band so accomplished as the Beatles, any of the members could dislike any of the songs they produced. But as with lots of bands throughout history existing in this pressure cooker-like environment, meant agreeing to disagree and sometimes smiling through gritted teeth for the sake of the band. Especially when your back catalogue is 300 songs strong, there's likely going to be a few that you don't look back on with the greatest of memories. In the years following the breakup of the Beatles, John Lennon revealed in a multitude of interviews some of the Beatles tunes he was less fond of and the ones he downright despised. Stay with me as we go through them one by one. Hi, I'm Adam, welcome back to Music Mongoose. Let's start with the track that Lennon reportedly hated the most, which, surprisingly, is one penned by himself, Run For Your Life, the first song recorded for the 1965 album Rubber Soul. Lennon was inspired by Elvis's Baby Let's Play House. He'd often take single lines or phrases from songs he admired and become inspired to write around those. In Baby Let's Play House, the line was, I'd rather see you dead, little girl, than to be with another man. Run For Your Life was then born around that line. But for whatever reason, it seemed the connection for the resulting song Lennon wrote never formed. I never liked Run For Your Life because it was just a song I knocked off, he told Rolling Stone magazine. It was just a song he wrote for the sake of it. And to Lennon's credit, the track received pretty poor reviews, citing out-of-tune guitar work and rough vocal performances. Now let's talk about Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. It's well documented at this point that a certain Mr. McCartney led the creative process of this album and could be somewhat overbearing at times. McCartney was the leader of the band at this point, in his mind and the public's, it would seem. Lennon, as a co-founder of the Beatles, didn't take to this too well. In fact, Sgt. Pepper was his most disliked record of all of them, so it's safe to say a good few tracks from that album are on Lennon's list. For example, Lovely Rita, written about a meter maid and the affection felt by the narrator, was silly, according to Lennon. I'm not interested in writing about people like that, I like to write about me because I know me. Another track from Sgt. Pepper hated by Lennon was When I'm 64. This song had huge sentimental value for McCartney. It was the first song he ever wrote at the age of just 16, all about the adorable notion of growing old with your partner. Lennon wasn't a fan. He even went so far to describe it as granny music in one interview, whatever that means. I would never dream of writing a song like that, Lennon would later say. If you're thinking this is all just a petty attack on Paul for being a bit of a d during the recording process of Sgt. Pepper, fear not. He also disliked his own song from that record, Good Morning, Good Morning. This one was inspired by TV commercials for Kellogg's Corn Flakes and the BBC sitcom Meet the Wife. Lennon would often have the TV on very low in the background during his writing process and this time it proved as the inspiration he needed for this track. However, in hindsight, Lennon was not a fan. He called it a throwaway, a piece of garbage in an interview. Pretty harsh. Another of Lennon's creations on Sgt. Pepper was Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds. Now, it might be a surprise to hear that Lennon despised this track as it held so much sentimental value for him, reportedly inspired by a song his son Julian sang at nursery. Despite the personal connection to the track, he used the word abysmal to describe it in an interview, although perhaps he was criticizing the production of the song more than anything else. It's a great song, but it isn't a great track because it wasn't made right. You know what I mean? He continued. Hello Goodbye, another firm fan favorite of the Beatles, was also disliked by Lennon. This was the A-side for the experimental acid trip of a song that was I Am The Walrus. John Lennon, being John Lennon, pushed the band and label to make Walrus the A-side, but gave in to defeat and accepted Hello Goodbye was safer commercially for that side of the record. He once described it as three minutes of contradictions and meaningless juxtapositions. The best bit was the end, which we all ad-libbed in the studio where I played piano. What do you reckon, a genuine disliking of the track or just bitter that I Am The Walrus didn't make it to the A-side? Mean Mr. Mustard from Abbey Road was also a sore spot for Lennon. 
Written during his time in India, it was inspired by a newspaper article he had read about a man who hid money to avoid being told to spend it. In a 1980 interview, he described it as a bit of crap that I wrote in India and, again, a piece of garbage. Now let's talk about The White Album. John Lennon regarded this one as the best of the Beatles. It was his favorite album they had produced. However, not even this one escapes the scrutiny of Lennon. The unlucky track in question is Birthday. It serves as the opening song of the third side of the LP and it was, for the most part, a completely improvised track. Described as a joint 50-50 effort between McCartney and Lennon, it was made up and recorded on the same evening at EMI Studios, all emanating from a single riff McCartney produced. According to assistant producer of the track Chris Thomas, McCartney was the first to arrive that day, immediately playing around with the riff. By the time the others had joined him, he had pretty much written the song. Some back and forth between Lennon and McCartney and the track was as good as done. Lennon, reflecting on that evening, said he thought McCartney was trying to write a song like Happy Birthday Baby by The Tune Weavers, a hit in the late 50s. Can we just pause to admire that band name? The Tune Weavers? What were they thinking? Anyway, in an interview with Playboy in 1980, Lennon came back to that favorite phrase of his and deemed the song a piece of garbage. He didn't pull his punches, really, did he? What do you reckon the worst Beatles song is? Let me know in the comments. Or let me know what your favorite one is. And please do remember to subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed the video. I put a ton of work into these and it really does help me out. Also, speaking of worst songs, did you know the Rolling Stones intentionally wrote the worst song in history? Click the video on screen for that one and I'll catch you next time on Music Mongoose.